Puss in Boots. In a land far, far away, there once lived a miller with his three sons. The youngest son, Marquis, was always his favorite. But when the miller died, he left the mill to his eldest son, a donkey to his second son, and a cat called Puss to his youngest. The elder sons laughed and left Marquis to fend for himself. He was disappointed and wondered why his father left him a cat. Oh, Puss, what am I to do with you? I can barely feed myself. I don't have a mill or even a donkey. How do I live? Then something magical happened that shocked Marquis. Don't worry, master. I can help you. Puss, you can talk. A cat is talking to me. Oh, I can do a lot more, master. Just give me a bag and a pair of boots, and I'll show you what I can do. Marquis was still shocked and wondered how he was to arrange for a bag and a pair of boots. But seeing a talking cat brought him hope. All right, Puss. I'll give you the bag and a pair of boots. Let's see what you can do. Marquis took the little money he had and went to a shoemaker. The shoemaker was surprised to hear the strange request. Boots for your cat? Are you sure? Yes, please. Puss soon got his boots and a large bag. Now, Puss, you have what you asked for. What are you going to do? First, I'm going to get us some dinner. <laughs> Puss went to a place where he knew he could catch rabbits. He put a few carrots and lettuce in the bag and left it open. He went behind a tree and waited. Soon, a few rabbits found the bag and dived into it to eat the food. Puss jumped out from behind the tree and quickly closed the bag. Got you. He took the rabbits to Marquis. Here's our dinner. Puss, you got us rabbits. Thank you. They cooked a hearty meal and still had enough left for the next day. But the next day, Puss did not rest. He went out again and caught more rabbits using the same trick. On his way back, he decided to visit the king's castle. The guards at the castle blocked his path. Let me go, sirs. I have gifts for the king. I'm sure he wouldn't be happy to know you stopped me. A cat that wears boots and talks. This one is surely a sight for the king. Let it through. They stared at Puss, walked through the doors and into the castle. He reached the king, queen, and the princess and spoke to their surprise. Your Majesty, my name is Puss. I belong to my master, Marquis of Carabas. He pays his respects to you with the gift of these rabbits. Please accept them, my lord. Oh, what a magical cat! Aren't we pleased to have you here? Let your master know we accept his gift and appreciate his gesture. Thank you, my lord. The princess was amused looking at the magical cat with his boots. We shall call you Puss in Boots. Frego, make sure he leaves with his tummy full. Give him the best milk and cream we have. Frego, the king's attendant, did as he was told, and Puss licked all the cream happily and left the castle. Puss went back to Marquis and told him all that happened. Puss in boots! <laughs> you met the royal family. Tell me, how was the princess? Oh, she was beautiful as the bowl of milk and cream she gave me. A sweet voice and a kind heart. You must marry her. Me? I may be your master, but I am not a prince. Some prince with a huge castle will take her away. Puss didn't say a word, but every day he went to the castle and gifted a rabbit or two to the king. Word soon spread about Puss in Boots, the magical talking cat that hunts for his master and brings gifts for the king. Not far away, there lived a giant in a huge castle, and was as big as a giant can be. Nobody crossed his path, and those who did were eaten up. But Puss was brave enough to pay him a visit and knocked on the castle's door. When the giant opened the door, he laughed, looking at the cat in front of him wearing a pair of boots. Ha <laughs> ha! What is this? A cat with 
boots and the cat that speaks, sir. Oh, it speaks. Wait, you must be the push in boats that I hear about. And you, sir, are the powerful giant with amazing powers. Everyone fears you. The giant was pleased to hear about his fame. You're lucky I don't eat cats. Come on in. Puss went into the castle, and the amused giant wondered why he had come. Why are you here? I wanted to see your magical powers. I heard you can turn into any animal. Is that true? Of course it's true. Can you show me? I would love to see. The giant then turned into a huge and powerful lion. He growled at poor Puss, who jumped up in fear. All right, I believe you. Please turn back into yourself. Ha <laughs> ha! Now do you believe me? Yes. Yes, I do, but... Yes? Can you turn yourself into a small animal as well? You're so huge. I can turn into anything. Look at this. And he turned into a small mouse in a second. Puss was waiting for this moment. He pounced on him and gobbled him up quickly. Ah, that was a heavy meal. He strolled out of the castle with his head held high. Everything was going as he had planned. Puss came home to his master. No rabbits today? Master, let's go for a bath in the river. Now? Yes, master, right away. Just trust me. Marquis was confused, but followed Puss to the river. He removed his clothes and entered the river to bathe. Puss quickly picked up his clothes and hid them away under a stone. There was a path nearby where the king's carriage was passing. Puss knew the king's family took this path once every week. He waited for the carriage to come nearer and began to scream. Help! Help! The carriage stopped and the king peeked out at the familiar voice. Puss! What are you doing here? Your Majesty, please help my master, Marquis of Carabas. He was bathing in the river when someone ran away with his clothes. It is cold, and my master will soon fall ill if he gets no help. Guards, pick the best of our clothes and rush to Marquis of Carabas and make sure he's dry, clothed, and warm. The guards rushed towards the river with the royal clothes and soon came the master of Puss in Boots, accompanied by the guards. He looked like a prince dressed in the king's clothes. The princess peeked from the carriage, and Marquis saw the princess for the first time. Oh, Marquis of Carabas, such a handsome prince. The princess? She is as lovely as I imagined. Marquis recovered from this sight and bowed to the king. Thank you for this kindness, my king. No, thank you. It's good to finally meet the Marquis of Carabas. We have enjoyed your gifts every single day. We have much to speak of, but first, let us get you home. Puss, who was watching all of this, suddenly spoke to the king. Your Highness, we would be delighted to host you at my master's castle. Won't we, master? Marquis looked at Puss in surprise. Our castle? Puss nodded, and though Marquis was confused, he decided to trust Puss once again. Uh, yes, your majesty. I welcome you to dine with us at my castle. Very well. Let us go. Marquis stepped into the carriage, and Puss ran ahead of their carriage. They were going towards the land that belonged to the giant. The giant had many farmers working in the fields. Puss found the farmers and warned them. Beware, the king approaches. If the king asks who owns these lands, you must tell him they belong to Marquis of Carabas. If you don't say that, the king will have your head. The farmers were afraid and they nodded their heads in fear. The king's carriage soon passed through these lands. The king looked at the farmers working and called out to them. Who do these lands belong to? Who do you work for? Marquis of Carabas, my lord. The king and his family were impressed. Master of Carabas, 
These are fine lands you have. Thank you, my lord. As the carriage reached the giant's castle, Puss was ready to welcome them. He had made all the arrangements. The king, his family, and Marquise got down from the carriage and admired the castle. Wow! What a magnificent castle! Indeed! Marquis soon realized this was supposed to be his castle. My lord, welcome to my castle of Carabas. Please come in and dine with us. That day, Marquis and Puss in Boots hosted the royal family at a huge table filled with delicacies. Puss had the giant servants serve a fantastic dinner for everyone. Marquis and the princess kept looking at each other, and so did the king and queen. They knew they had found a fine man for their daughter. The king spoke to Marquis and said the words Marquis thought he would never hear. Lord Marquis, I asked you as a father and not as a king. Will you marry my daughter? My lord, it would be my pleasure and my honor. Marquis and the princess were soon married, and a miller's son became a prince. Marquis was finally grateful to his father for leaving him a cat. Puss in Boots never had to hunt for rabbits again. He lived with the prince and princess and enjoyed a royal life in the castle.